Good morning, Toronto City Church. Our online experience is starting soon. While you're waiting, click subscribe and the thumbs up button. This helps increase our reach so that we're able to share the gospel with more people. And don't forget to send the video link to others so they can join us today.
Good morning, Toronto City Church. Welcome to our online worship experience. My name is Jessica, and I'm so glad that you've joined us today. We're going to go into a time of worship, and Pastor Brendan will be bringing the word. So grab the family, and let's worship together. God, we just thank you for this wonderful day that you have made, and we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you that every morning you put a new song in our mouth. And so, God, I just thank you for this time that we can worship you. Show me one 
your spirit is saying um, as we listen to the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where and when you're watching this webinar or this webcast, but we are so glad to have you here with us at Toronto City Church. It is just a real honor to have you tune in and to have you be part of this, whether you're part of the TCC family or whether you're a guest who's just joining us. Maybe you found this for the first time. We are so glad that you're here. We're so glad that you're worshiping with us, and we're really excited about just having you here today for the Word of God that God's given me to share. Well, as we like to say here at Toronto City Church, worship isn't done now. We're just shifting gears because we are moving into our time of giving. And so as always, the information to give is coming up on the screen in front of you. As always, if you have any questions or there's any you know, help you need with giving, let us know. We're here to help you more than ever. But you know, I just want to continue to encourage you and thank you for your faithfulness in giving to Toronto City Church. One of the things that's been such a blessing to me in this season, even with all that's been going on, has just been the faithfulness, the rock-solid faithfulness of so many in this church family of bringing their tithes, bringing their offerings, continuing to support what God is doing. Yes, things have looked a little different. But you know what? I'm really excited in that I feel like our reach has increased. We are able to reach more people than ever before, even through what we've been doing online. We've been able to touch more lives. We're able to impact our church family members and others on a daily basis in ways that we just weren't doing before all this happened. And your giving, your investment, your faithfulness is part of that. Really, see, that's part of giving. That's part of God's plan in this, is that we all are teaming together. We're all sowing faithfully, and we are all part of what God is doing. Right? You may never stand on this stage and preach a message. You may never be on camera speaking to people, but if you're giving, you're part of what God's doing. And there is going to be reward for you just as much as there's reward for me, just as much as there's reward for the team that's helping put us all together. There's going to be reward for you if you're giving and you're part of it. That's part of God's way. That's part of God's plan. And so I want to thank you for your faithfulness in your giving. I want to thank you for just your, your being part of this. I want to encourage you, all you are giving, continue to be faithful. Even sometimes we don't see the results in the short term. We don't see the fruit in the short term. You know, I think of my wife has gotten into a little bit of gardening, so she's got some plants she's growing out in our little back porch. Well, you know what? When we first started growing, you didn't see a lot of change at first. You didn't see a lot happening, but over time, as you watered, as we just kind of watched, you can see the change happening more and more. That's the way the things work in the kingdom of God. Sometimes you don't see it at first very much, but I promise you it's happening and it's coming. And so I want to thank you. I want to encourage you. And I want to just challenge and welcome anyone who is not yet engaged in this level of faith. You've not yet engaged in this part of Christianity, where it's saying, I'm going to bring my tithes and bring my offerings to the Lord. I want to encourage you. Now's a great time to start. Why not do it now? Just get plugged in, get connected. We would be so thankful for you being part of this, even through your giving. And so let's pray. Let's commit this to the Lord. Again, the information's on the screen there for you, all the ways that you can give, and then we're going to have some weekly announcements. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name, and Lord, I thank you just for the honor we have to give and be part of what you're doing. God, I thank you for that. every person that gives, every person that sows and invests, there is reward for them in the fruit that happens. We're believing you that we're going to touch nations, God, and there is, there is a reward. There's fruit for every single person in that who gives and who contributes, God. And Lord, whether they give small or whether they give large, there is still great reward because the reward really is for their obedience to you. And so, Lord, we just thank you for this. We love you. And we just pray a blessing over each one. God, I thank you for multiplying their resources. They have even more to give and invest in the kingdom of God. And so we thank you, Father. We love you in Jesus' name. And everyone agreed, said, amen. All right, please turn your attention to the screen for our weekly announcements, and then I'll be back with the word.
All right, everyone, we're back, and we're ready to go into the Word of God. I'm excited. It's the first Sunday of the month, and so that means two things. Number one, it means that it is Healing School Sunday. And so we this year have been taking the first Sunday of every month to focus on healing, to focus on growing in the supernatural, of just seeking God, diving the Word of God. So we're going to be doing that today. But also as the first Sunday of the month, it is Communion Sunday. And so I know this was already mentioned, but if you don't yet have your elements, your crackers, your juice, please make sure you grab them quick, get them ready, because at the end of this message, we are going to be taking communion together and praying. Amen? All right, sounds good. Well, if you have your Bibles, I want you to get it out right now. We're going to be going to a lot of scriptures today as we continue in our healing school. And we are actually going to pick up on a message that I preach now. It would have been several months ago. And so several months ago, and you can always track back online and on the podcast and listen to these things, but I was preaching about and talking about why everyone isn't healed. And this is a very honest and real question that if we believe it's God's will to heal people, if we believe that it's always God's will to heal, why isn't everyone healed? And so we took some time a couple months ago for the first part of this message. We talked about five reasons of why people are not healed. And so today we are going to continue with this teaching and we're going to talk a little bit more about why everyone's healed and we're going to discuss a little bit about how do we respond, what is the right response when people are not healed. And so we're going to dive right into that, and we're going to go for it. So let's pray, and let's, let's jump in it, because at the end, we're also going to be praying and ministering healing for anyone who's in need. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you just for this opportunity once again we have to go to your word. Hello, we thank you for this opportunity once again that we have to talk about healing and to talk about your power in our lives. And so Lord, we just humble ourselves right now. And we say, Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us and teach us right now. We need you. We need your presence. We need your words. We need your input in our lives today. And that you will really speak to us in the name of Jesus. And everyone who agreed with me said, amen. All right. Well, you have your Bibles. Let's get ready to dive right in. Now, you'll remember again, two lessons ago, we talked about the fact that the Bible is clear that healing is always the will of God. Now, I won't re-preach that because you can go back and listen to the message, but we see clearly from the scriptures, time and time again, if you read the Bible, you can't come away, you can't help but come away feeling that God wants to heal people. And you can't come away feeling that healing is always God's will. But this message then leads to a very important, a very real, and a very pertinent question. And it's a question that genuine-hearted people truly ask If we're all honest, it's a question we all ask from time to time. And it's saying then, if God's will is always healing, why isn't everyone healed? Right? And we need to we need to address this. We need to talk about this. We need to go in. And so as I mentioned already, I did a part one of this message. And so if you go back, I believe it was at the start of May, if I remember correctly, and you go back to the start of May, you can get why isn't everyone healed part one. But I want to continue to build on top of this and talk a little bit more about some reasons of why aren't people healed. But first, let's make sure we lay some groundwork, okay? First and foremost, we have to make sure, and I want to be very clear, my heart in teaching and preaching this, is we have to approach this question with a ton of humility and a ton of compassion. We are not just talking about some abstract theological concept here. We're talking about the fact that there's people who who are loved, people who matter, who were not healed. This question matters because there's people listening right now and you've been praying and believing for healing and you're still suffering or struggling with something. And so I want to make sure that we're really clear as we approach this topic right off the start that we're coming with this humility and this compassion. I'm not just trying to talk about a theological concept and be indifferent to how difficult it is and how challenging it is for some people. And if you're listening to me and you're one of those people who've lost someone or who are struggling through something yourself, my heart is so with you today. I am not teaching this to try and just kind of bang away with my Bible and say, this is the way it is, and I don't care how you feel. No, no, that's not my heart at all. My heart in this is saying, listen, we want to grow together. We want to grow. We've got to approach this with a ton of humility and compassion. So that's really our heart. Secondly, I want to just remind you, and I dug in and unpackaged this a couple months ago when I taught this before, but I want to review it again. It's very important that we really lay a foundation here that our 
The foundation for our reality is the Scriptures, and it's the Word of God, not our experience. Now, I'm not trying to take away from our experience. I am not trying to just like totally, you know, kind of just totally deny our experience means anything at all. But here's what I've found, and if I can say this very humbly, anyone that I have talked to or anyone that I have listened to who is struggling to believe or is in disagreement that healing is always the will of God, the foundation of their argument is someone who wasn't healed. And so the foundation of their argument is there was someone who wasn't healed. There was someone they were believing for, someone they weren't praying for. You know, so-and-so was just an amazing Christian or so-and-so was an amazing leader. And guys, we all know people who that's happened to. But what I would humbly suggest as we look at that, and anyone who's listening, you're kind of wrestling through that. Here's what I want to ask you. We have to make a decision, and you as a fellow Christian would believe our foundation of reality has to be the Word of God whether we see it all the time or not, right? We've got to go to the Word and not just our experience. And the reason I say this so strongly is in this topic and many other topics, if we go to our experience, there's a lot of things that because we didn't experience it in a certain circumstance, we would go, well, I guess that's just not God. Instead of asking, seeking, knocking, contending, pressing through, believing, growing, right? It kind of gets us trapped in a, well, we had an experience, and again, I please hear me. I am not in any way trying to just be indifferent about that experience. I have been through some experiences, as I've, as I've shared with you. But we've, I just would humbly ask you to consider that we have to go with the Word. And we have to look at the Word, and we have to choose to believe the Word. The other thing I've been sharing with you guys is just what I've called option A versus option B. And option C. And here's what I mean by that. Is we have two choices when we see someone who isn't healed. Because if we're honest, all of us have seen people we've prayed for that have not been healed. Or people that have not been healed yet. Right? So real talks. It's there. Let's get that elephant out there in the room. It's right there. But what a lot of us feel like we have, the only choice we have is go, well, I guess it's not God's will because we haven't seen it with so-and-so. Or I guess it's not God's will because we haven't seen it with this person. And that's what we feel like our only choices. But I'm here to present another choice to you. And that other choice is it's okay to go, you know what, I don't know why we didn't see a breakthrough in this situation, but that doesn't mean it wasn't God's will. And it doesn't mean that we can't believe and contend together to grow into this area. You'll remember I've said to you, you know, if, if we were to take this small little dot and put it on a piece of paper and say, that's all we know, and then we're to draw as big as a circle as possible, we'd say, those are all the things we don't know. And that circle probably would need to be even bigger than it was because there's so much that we don't know. And the question then becomes, is it possible that the answer is out there in what we don't know, rather than just saying, no, I guess it's not God's will? Well, of course it is. And so when we are confronted by someone who is not healed, or we are confronted by someone who does not uh, receive, we don't have to let our faith just be kind of shattered and go, well, I guess it just isn't God's will, and I'm never going to pray for this and believe for this again. No. What we can do is we can say, okay, we don't know why this happened. We're going to mourn with those who mourn. We're going to walk through this, but we're going to continue to press into what God has for us. And that's really the heart of why we're even doing this healing school. That's the heart of why we're contending for this as a church family, is we're saying there's a lot we don't know yet. Jesus healed them all. We don't yet, but if we keep growing, maybe we can see more and more people walk in healing power. Amen? And so I wanted to make sure I took a little bit of time there because, or else you can get into this kind of teaching and you can just have like the wrong heart and the wrong tone on it and it's not helping anyone. So please, if you're listening, especially if you're listening to me and you're not sure you agree with me, or maybe you're listening to me and you completely disagree with me. You know what? I'm okay with that. Here's what I humbly want to ask is hear my heart and look at the scriptures with me. Look at the word. Pray over it. That's just what I'm asking because I'm with you. We're brothers and sisters in Christ, but I just really believe the word of God says this, so I have to share this because I want to see people healed and I want to see people free and I want to see people transformed. Amen? Amen. All right. So let's dive in a little bit more today. Why isn't everyone healed? Now, here's why we're focusing on this. We've already been very clear. There's things we don't know. But guys, there's a lot of things the Bible does tell us about why people aren't healed. And so my perspective is, I would want to know, what does the Bible say that are reasons people aren't healed? So if I'm believing for healing, or I'm praying for somebody else, we can at least address those things. 
Maybe there's still some mystery and some other things that we don't know. But if God has clearly stated some things in his word, let's make sure we know what those things are so that we can at least, for lack of a better way to say it, check those things off our checklist and keep pressing in for healing. Amen? And so we've been really focusing out of a teaching from F.F. F. Bosworth, who's a great man of God. He's with the Lord now, but he was a man of healing, and he wrote a book called Christ the Healer, which, again, I'd really encourage you to read. It's a little bit older English because it was written in the early 1900s, but it is so good. The teaching there is so good. And so in our last teaching along these lines, we talked about five reasons that actually he shared in one of his chapters of why people aren't healed. We said there was insufficient instruction. In other words, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You don't know what you don't know. Number two, a lack of united prayer. And so where there is a lack of unity and a lack of prayer, there is not an atmosphere for healing. That's why even like what we're doing on Fridays, where we're praying and we're seeking God, why we're saying as a church, we want to build the tabernacle of David. We want to be a house of prayer. Why? Because that creates atmosphere for the supernatural. We also talked about community unbelief when Jesus went to his hometown and they did not believe. The Bible says he could do no mighty works there because of their unbelief. We talked about the traditions of men and how the traditions of man can hinder the word of God. That's what Jesus said. So if we have traditional mindsets regarding healing and sickness and disease that are not in line with the word of God, it can actually hinder what God wants to do. And the last one, at least, we talked about breaking natural laws. And so if we break natural laws that God's put in place, and we will not change that, so maybe we smoke, and then we're praying for healing from lung cancer, but we keep smoking, it just sabotages the process. And so we don't want to do that. Today, I want to talk to you about five more reasons why people are not healed. Again, the context for this is that we are understanding what are the things we do know that we can focus on growing in or changing or shifting so we can walk in a greater dimension of healing. And so number six is unbelief in the person who prays. The Bible is explicitly clear that faith in prayer makes a difference. And if there's unbelief, it can hinder healing. James 5, 14 to 15 says this, if, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Now, just really simply here, guys, in the scriptures, in the book of James, it says the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick. Now, what this suggests to me is, number one, there is power in a prayer of faith. If you actually study healing, there's different ways that healing can come. Healing can come through the gift of healing. Healing can come through a prayer of faith. Healing can come with the elders anointing and laying hands. Healing can come through just building your faith in the word of God. There's a lot of different ways that healing can come or manifest. But we see here, one of the ways is through the prayer of faith being prayed over someone. But see, what this would suggest is if there's a prayer of faith, there's also a prayer that's not in faith. Right? And I know that's simple, but I really want us to catch that today. You can pray, but not be in faith. Right? You can go to God. You can pray, but you cannot be coming to him in faith. See, faith is choosing to believe God. And one of the reasons why it's so important, let me backtrack, one of the reasons why it's so important that we settle the fact that healing is God's will is because if you don't know it's God's will, it's very difficult to pray a prayer of faith for healing when you don't even know if God wants to do it, right? Because faith starts with the revealed will of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, which is rhema. That's where faith starts. So if I don't even know that God wants to do this, I can't pray a prayer of faith. If I'm not praying a prayer of faith, then my, the power can be hindered. We could go to many scriptures to show that. See, faith is choosing to believe God. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says this, Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that He exists, and he rewards those who seek him. See, I love this. It says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And when we come near to God, we must believe that he exists or that he is and that he rewards. See, our faith matters. Guys, if we pray in unbelief, that prayer is not going to make much of an impact or much of a difference. 
I don't know, maybe in some season or some situation, somehow there's still something that gets broken through. But here, the Bible is really clear. It's the prayer of faith that saves the sick. Not the prayer of doubt, not the prayer of unbelief, not the prayer of, well, I'm not so sure. It's the prayer of faith. Where does faith come from? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. In other words, we know God's rhema word regarding that situation. We know that this is God's will. And because of that, we can pray a prayer of faith. And when you pray a prayer of faith, it taps into the power of God to release healing. But see, if someone is in unbelief, if someone is not praying a prayer of faith, guys, the Bible is clear that can hinder things and that can stop things. Now, let me be really clear because we've said this before. I do not want anyone to jump off this point and suggest that I'm saying that anytime someone's healed, we say, well, they just didn't have enough faith. I think that's so old mindset that's passed away. And it's kind of like shame and guilt-based. This is not about someone doesn't have enough faith, and so that's why they're healed. There's lots of reasons why someone isn't healed, and there's lots of factors that play into it, and we're not going to blame somebody's faith because something didn't happen. But in the middle of that, we still need to understand that faith is important, and sometimes unbelief is what's going to hinder it. Well, I would say sometimes, all the times, unbelief can hinder it. You know, somebody's got to have faith in the situation. Somebody's got to believe God. Someone's got to be willing to take that stand. I love Matthew 17, 14 to 20, and it says this. It says, and when they came to the crowd, a man came up to him and kneeling before him said, Lord, this is to Jesus, have mercy on my son. For he has seizures and he suffers terribly. For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. And Jesus answered, O faithless, watch this, O faithless and twisted generation. And Jesus didn't play around. He's hardcore. How long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him here to me. Now, I get the impression, I don't feel like Jesus was saying this to be mean. I think he was just being honest in the moment. He's like, guys, where's your faith? Right? Like, how long am I going to have to deal with this before you step up and believe? Right? So he said, bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon. It came out of him, and the boy was healed instantly. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, watch this, he said, because of your little faith. Right? So, the prayer of faith heals the sick. And now we see Jesus saying to his disciples, you could not minister this boy because of your little faith. He says, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. It's interesting as well, too, because another translate, or another uh, account of this passage talks about Jesus said this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting, which to me would suggest that prayer and fasting are very important elements for building up your faith. But guys, here's what it is, is faith or a lack of faith, unbelief can hinder the healing power of God. We see it in James. We see it here in the ministry of Jesus. And so this is just one thing to say, okay, will we, here's the challenge, will we commit to growing in our faith in this area? You know, I'll probably mention it several times throughout this, throughout this teacher, through this message, but a lot of times we don't study healing, we don't pray for healing, we don't stretch ourselves in healing, and then all of a sudden something comes up, now we want to go for it, but we've never taken the time to grow our faith, to grow our belief in God. That's why we're doing this as a church family, because we want to grow, and we want to be ready, and we want to be prepared for seasons come that we need to stand in the gap, we need to stand in for people, we need to stand in for ourselves, we will be ready to do it. Will we accept the challenge to say we're going to grow in our faith now in this area so we're ready? Right? It's so key and it's so important. So we see because of unbelief. Number seven, a number of reason why people are not healed sometimes is it's not a sickness that needs to be healed as much as it's an evil spirit that needs to be cast out. Matthew 17, 18. Again, this same, uh, this same passage we are just in. And Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him and the boy was healed instantly. Mark 16, 7, 18. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. They'll drink any deadly poison. It will not hurt them. And they'll lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. Guys, we need to understand that the Bible does teach very clearly about God. It teaches about the devil. It teaches about angels. It teaches about demons. And demons are, the, are, are Satan's workers here in this earth. They're not in the natural world. They're in the spirit realm. But their job is to oppress people. Their job is to cause as much havoc as they possibly can. 
And we have been given authority. There is spiritual warfare that happens around that. And part of that, which Jesus talked about, was he said, they're going to cast out demons. In other words, we're going to command demons to leave people's lives. We're also going to command demons to leave other structures or other areas. There's a whole lot that I could go into this. It's not the main point of my teaching. But what the Bible is very clear, and you can actually see it through different parts of Scripture, that sometimes someone can have a sickness or an affliction, and it's actually not a physical thing, but the roots is spiritual. Hear me, it's still manifesting physically, but the roots are spirit. And so if you will discern that is happening and you will learn to take authority over that demonic spirit, then it will have to go. Sometimes you can even see it generationally in people. Sometimes generational, yes, it's just a DNA thing or it's a predisposition to something. But there is also times where there is an evil spirit that has kind of been circling within a family. And so we have authority over demonic spirits in the name of Jesus. We have authority to cast them out. And so if the issue is a demonic spirit that needs to go, and we are trying to just pray for healing, sometimes we're not going to see that healing until we deal with the demonic spirit that is there. Does that make sense? Hopefully that does. It's taken authority over that. Now, let me bring a caution. This is not to suggest that every sickness or disease is a demon. Some people can take this out of balance, and they're going to start casting out everything. Oh, I'm sneezing. Come out in Jesus' name. Okay, no, no, you just have a cold. That's not a demon. That's just a cold, right? And so it's there, but what's the key? The key is, uh, the key is, how do we know? It's through discernment. See, because we can't say everything's a demon, but guys, it's foolish to totally ignore the demonic in this area as well. And so somebody said, well, what do I do then? How do I know? It's through the gift of discernment and the Holy Spirit. Again, the Lord will show you if something is demonic, and he'll give you instructions in your spirit about how to take authority over that. But again, if we don't deal with the demonic, sometimes there's sicknesses and diseases that will stay that don't need to stay. And I actually believe there's someone, at least one person that's listening to this right now, and this is actually a word for you that there is a demonic assignment against your life. And you need to continue to pray for healing, but you need to take authority and get some people around you, get, get some connection leaders, get some pastoral leaders. Maybe you're not even in TCC. Someone maybe is watching this from halfway around the world. Get some spiritual people with you and get them to pray with you and take authority over that demonic spirit and command it to leave, and it will go in Jesus' name. All right, so today we've seen why aren't people healed. Number one, we said because of unbelief in the person who prays. Number two, because an evil spirit that needs to be cast out, which actually is technically number seven if we combine with the other message. Number eight is because of the sick person's sin. Sin in someone's life can hinder them from receiving healing. Now again, let me be clear. We're not coming with a shame, guilt basis. your fault you're not healed because you're a sinner. That is not the spirit of what I'm talking about at all. But what I am saying, guys, is Romans 3, uh, 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sin equals death. If we continue to have sin in our lives, if we continue to tolerate sin, it can stop, it can hinder, it can undermine the healing power of God. That's just the way it is. That's the reality. of We're not trying to point a finger and say, oh, you're a sinner, so you're not healed. That's not the spirit. But if there's sin in our life, especially as a Christian and as a believer, if we are tolerating sin in our life, there's a lot of God's stuff that's going to stop up. right? God has it there for us, but it gets stopped up because of sin. And so if we will get that sin out, it clears the pipe, so to speak, for the healing power of God to flow. F.F. Uh, F. Bosworth said this. He said, so we ought to learn to say with David, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. God has not promised to destroy the works of the devil in your body while we are clinging to the works of the devil in our soul. Unconfessed sin hinders people from receiving God's mercy. His words tells us, he that covereth his sins will not prosper, but whosoever confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. And this is from Christ the healer. Isn't that line so powerful? F.F. F. Bosworth just drops these lines. God has not promised to destroy the works of the devil in the body while we are clinging to the works of the devil in our soul. And so there's something very important with that. Now, again, really clear, we're not 
trying to create a, a shame-based perspective which your fault because you're in sin. But guys, here's really it. Sin carries a price tag. Proverbs 13, 15 says, the way of a transgressor is hard. If we have unrepentant sin in our hearts and in our lives, it will short-circuit the healing power of God in so many ways. Yes, there's times where we can still receive something, often through somebody else praying for us. But that is a gift of mercy in that moment. But especially as believers, just get the sin out. Just repent. If you're listening to me today, if you're watching this broadcast, and you've got hidden sin in your life. You've got areas of sin that you're playing games with. Listen, it's just not worth it. Get it out. Repent. How much does God have for you that is being held back right now because you're holding on or clinging to that sin? Repent. Forsake it. Get out of your life and watch. Is it worth being sick? Right? I, I, like straight up, let's ask that question. Is, is my sin worth being sick over? I would say no in Jesus' name. Get the sin out out. Another great passage from this is if we went back, and I won't read it right now, but from Mark chapter 6, where Jesus went to his hometown. And the Bible says they were offended at him. They did not honor at him. And they had great unbelief. And because of that, it says he could do no mighty work there. Once again, we see what happens. Sin stopped the power. Let's get the sin out so we can walk in healing power. Let's get it in our lives so we can receive, but let's also get it in our lives so we can give. Amen? Amen. So we want to get the sin out because unrepentant sin can stop the healing power of God. Number nine, holding unforgiveness. Now this connects very much to number eight because unforgiveness or holding bitterness is sin. But I like to focus on this because this is a very specific trap that the enemy uses against many of us. But if we are holding on to bitterness and unforgiveness in our lives, guys, it can hinder us from even healing. And actually, scientific studies, I'm not even talking like biblical studies, scientific studies show that bitterness and unforgiveness actually creates an environment in your body for sickness and disease. And so it creates an environment for sickness, and it will hinder you from receiving healing. Mark, Matthew 6, 14 and 15 says, but if you forgive others, there's trespasses. Your heavenly Father will also forgive you. If you do not forgive others, there's no trespasses. Neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. There's a lot to this passage, but it's very clear. If we won't forgive others, we block off the forgiveness of God in our lives. So if forgiveness is blocked off, would it be fair to say that healing is blocked off? Would it be fair to say that blessing is blocked off? Would it be fair to say that provision is blocked off? Definitely. If we are holding bitterness and unforgiveness in our heart towards others, it crimps. You know, remember, we, remember your kids? And you used to take the hose out. I don't know if you did this. We used to do this all the time as kids. We'd be spraying each other, having fun with the water. And then someone would get smart, and they'd run over, and they'd grab the hose, and they'd crimp the hose, right? They'd kind of take the hose and bend it together. What happened? The water would stop. Now, does that mean the water was gone? Did they make the water magically disappear? Did the water just kind of evaporate? No, the water's still there, but the flow has been blocked, right? And then as soon as you unlet it go, boom, the water would come shooting back out. It is the exact same way in the things of the Spirit. Bitterness and unforgiveness block the flow, guys. It blocks the flow. That's why we say when you hold bitterness against somebody else, it's like drinking poison and expecting it to hurt them. It doesn't hurt them. It hurts you on so many levels, and it can hurt you from blocking or hindering your healing. You may be listening to me today, and it's bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart that is hindering you from receiving healing right now. Make a choice to forgive, not for that person's sake, even though hopefully your heart gets there through God's love as well, but for your own sake. Forgive give so you can receive. Bosworth said this. He said, Jesus said, if we forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. The first thing we need and the first thing God wants to grant us is the forgiveness of our sins. But God cannot forgive us when we will not forgive others. And if he cannot forgive others, if he cannot forgive us, he certainly cannot heal us. Many times we have seen the afflicted healed. This guy saw thousands and thousands of healings. Many times we've seen the afflicted healed in the twinkling of an eye when they were ready to forgive those who wronged them. I love that turn of phrase, in the twinkling of an eye. Maybe for you today, healing is right there in a twinkling of an eye if you will just forgive and so today's message is not meant to dive deeper into forgiveness. We've got messages here at Toronto State Church. I'd encourage you, Undercover, or excuse me, The Bait of Satan by John Bevere is a wonderful book. There's many resources out there. 
Contact a leader if you need to go on a forgiveness journey. But we want to encourage you, go on that journey so that the flow gets unstopped over your life. Uh, I mentioned this before, but I'll just go back again. Bitterness and unforgiveness have actually been tied to so many illnesses. Here's a recent, uh, here's a recent quote just from a Concordia study at Concordia University. It said, the latest research gives credence to the link between state of mind and health as a recent study from Concordia University that has found constant bitterness can make a person ill. Holding on to bitterness can affect metabolism, immune response, organ function, and lead to physical disease, researchers say. Let that bitterness go. Let that unforgiveness go. Scientific researchers are just finding out here what the Bible has told us for thousands of years, that when we hold bitterness, when we hold unforgiveness, it stops the flow. Let it go. Forgive that person. Please walk in forgiveness today so your healing can be made manifest. But again, if someone refuses to let go of their bitterness, then they are saying no to healing. And you can pray till you are blue in the face. I can pray till we're blue in the face. And every once in a while, a gift of faith will just kind of overwhelm that, especially when someone's not a believer. But with Christians, if they're saying, God, I'm not going to forgive, it will stop the flow. And so get forgiveness right. Go on a forgiveness journey so that you can walk in the fullness of healing of what God has for you. And last but not least, I want to bring you to one more point for today. Point number 10, why are some people not healed? Again, we are looking at the things that are very clear in the scriptures so that we can make sure we take care of those things. And then we can continue to press into the mysteries and the things we do not know yet. Lack of diligence. Exodus 15, 26 says this. If you will listen diligently to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in your eyes and give ear to his commandments and keep all statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you that upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord your healer. Now, one thing to study in the scriptures right there, because you might, whoa, wait, God put the sicknesses on them? That is not the causative tense of the verb. That is the permissive tense, which means because of the Egyptians' disobedience, particularly Pharaoh's, there was an allowing of these things to come. God didn't cause it, but God was saying, hey, you are choosing your path, and on this path, sickness and disease is one of the realities that is there. But we see, he said, if you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God and do as I want to talk to you about diligence for a second. Hebrews 11 verse 6, we already read this, but I want to go back to it again. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he comes to God, must believe that he is, and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. One of the reasons that we don't see healing in our lives or the lives of others, guys, let's be straight up, it's a lack of diligence. It's spiritual laziness on our parts where we do not want to be diligent. We do not want to grow in the things of God. We're focused on so many other things. And then all of a sudden, something comes up. And all of a sudden, now we want to get hardcore. All of a sudden, now we want to pray. But often, they just we're coming to the game late. We should have been getting ourselves ready long before that. One of the examples I love to give is a thief breaks into my house. That's not the time for me to run to my weight set and start pumping iron so I can get strong enough to defend my family. If that's the only time I'm pumping iron, I am not going to be ready. And there's a lot of times because of lack of diligence, we're not ready for a battle that comes. Even the Holy Spirit was trying us and saying, listen, there's some things coming. I need you to be deep in me. I'm going to help you overcome, but you need to be deep. But so often it's a lack of diligence. I remember, you know, because I have real conversations with God. I, I hope you do as well. But I remember one time I was going through something hard in my life and I was just in this moment of prayer and I just, I was really emotional and I was like, God, I'm just doing everything I know to do right now and nothing's working. And I just kind of there, you know, I, I made my big thing. And I just heard so clearly, it wasn't an audible voice, it was in my heart, but I heard so clearly the Holy Spirit just said to me, he said, no, you're not. And I went, okay, yeah, you're right, I'm not. Right? I was all emotional, oh God, I'm doing everything I can. And the Holy Spirit was like, no, you're not doing everything you can. There's so much more you could be doing right now. There's so much more ways you could be diving in right now. You could be way more diligent about this. So stop, you know, he didn't say all this, but in my mind, I'm here and stop whining and crying and making this big fuss about it. Just get diligent, right? And so guys, there's times where there's a lack of healing because there's a lack of diligence. Now again, we're not going to have a shame mindset with this or a blame mindset. It's always your fault because you weren't diligent, right? It's not our job to judge why anyone was or wasn't healed. Our job is to go with our hearts before God and in our sphere. But the Bible is very clear that if we are not diligent and we are not diligent in following him, we're not diligent in believing him, it's going to cause problems, 
right? So let's just make a choice to be diligent. Let's make a choice to say, I'm going to go all in in. I'm going to go all in after God. So this again, we're bringing things to a close. Again, guys, the five reasons we shared about today of just some reasons why people are not healed. Unbelief in a person who prays. An evil spirit that needs to be cast out. Sin in our lives that blocks the flow. Unforgiveness in our lives that can block the flow. And last but not least, a lack of diligence. Again, I'm not saying these are all the reasons, but these are things that can hinder the flow. These are things that can hinder healing. And what we want to do is we're on this healing journey. As we're on this journey of growing in the supernatural, we want to make sure we address each of these areas so that we have covered all the bases of what we do know so we can continue to press in for healing. And so just last but not least, someone might say, okay, but pastor, it's still hard. Someone I prayed for wasn't healed. I've shared with you my story. There's been some very close situations and people in our lives where we were prayed for healing and they weren't healed. But that has not left me in a place where I'm saying it's not God's will. That has left me in a place where I'm hungry and I'm passionate and I'm humbly seeking to grow in this area. And I'm going through it. So how do we posture ourselves if someone is not healed? What do we do? Number one, we need to grieve it. What I mean by this is the Bible says to mourn with those who mourn. And it is hard when something hasn't worked, especially if it's like final where someone has died or passed away. I shared about our miscarriage, right? Like it happened or my father-in-law passing away. It happened. So you need to go through a, ser- a, a season of actually grieving, right? You don't have to act like, well, it's okay or no, it's just I figured it all out. No, it hurts. It's hard. It's difficult. Mourn with those who mourn. Grieve the situation. But number two, make sure in the midst of grieving the situation, you do it in the right way where you refuse to become offended with God or you refuse to take a posture of discouragement. Now that's an art form because you are going to grieve and it's important who you have around you. But in the middle of it all, make a decision and say, God, I am not going to become offended with you and I'm not going to become discouraged. Guard my heart in this season, Lord. Heal my heart, but also guard my heart, because I do not want to carry disappointment instead of a spirit of faith as my foundation for the rest of my life. So number one, we need to grieve it. Number two, we need to refuse to become offended or discouraged. Number three, we need to choose faith. We need to choose to believe God. That's part of where I say that's option B. Option A is saying, well, it didn't work, so I guess it's not God, and I'm just going to accept that for the rest of my life. Or option B is saying, you know what? I don't understand everything that happened here, but I still choose to believe God. There's some things I'm not seeing, but I believe the Lord will ultimately reveal them to me, or ultimately in eternity, he'll reveal them to me, but I still see the word of God says healing is his will, and I choose to believe. I choose to walk by faith. It's one thing, guys, to walk by faith when everything's great, and everything's worked out the way we want it to. It's a whole nother thing altogether to say I'm standing by faith even when there's some things I don't understand. I'm standing by faith when I got some arrows in my shield and maybe an arrow too feels like it got through and it hit me. I'm still standing by faith. I'm still believing God. And so choose to believe by faith. And number four, keep growing and keep leaning in. That's the spirit of why I'm even doing these teachings. That's the spirit of why we're pressing in together as a church family is we're pressing in to believe God. And we're saying, God, we don't know everything. We don't understand. Heck, we we hardly know anything compared to all that there is to know. But God, you are our Father. Holy Spirit, you are our teacher. Lead us and guide us. We are pressing in that we will be a house of healing. We are pressing in that we will see thousands of people be experience the healing touch of Jesus Christ. We are pressing in so we can fulfill these words that people will come here before they even go to a hospital because they hear that God's power is here and that they can receive healing. We believe God. We're, we're pressing in so we can have healing rooms and healing ministries and healing can be flowing in the streets. We are pressing in together in the name of Jesus. Amen? And so that means we continue to grow and we continue to learn and we continue to allow God to even search our hearts regarding errors we need to make adjustments or make changes. But it's all done in a spirit of humility, a spirit of compassion, and a spirit of faith. Are you with me on this? Amen. All right, we're in this together. So we are now going to shift into taking communion. We'll just give you a moment or two here. Get your communion elements together. I'll be back with you for communion, and I'll be back with you as well so we can pray the prayer of faith for healing from every sickness and disease. All right. All right, everybody. So we're back here with communion. We have the bread. We have the juice. I trust you have yours as well. The Bible says that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it. 
He said, this is my body which is broken for you. Whenever you eat this, do so in remembrance of me. Let's eat together today in remembrance of him. Scripture also says he took the cup. So this is my blood which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Whenever you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. Let's drink together today in remembrance of him. Let's pray. Father, we come before you today in Jesus' name. And we thank you today as we've taken communion. We thank you for the sacrifice and the finished work of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you that, Jesus, you loved us. You came for us. You died and you rose again. And you died so we could be forgiven. You died so we could be saved. You also died so we could be free. You died so we could be healed. By your stripes, we were healed. And we know that's spiritual, but we also know that's physical. And so we thank you for this today. We remember what you've done for us today. And right now, in the name of Jesus, and I just, wherever you are, I want you to put yourself in a position to receive. Father, we speak and we release healing, that healing from the finished work of Jesus Christ to flow into every person. We speak healing into every individual that's watching this. We believe for healing, God, young or old. We speak healing. We speak life. We speak restoration. We speak freedom. We speak deliverance in the name of Jesus. Lord, even in the message that we talked about today, we pray the prayer of faith. And you said the prayer of faith will raise up those who are sick. God, show us if there's sin that needs to get out. Show if there's unforgiveness that needs to come out. In the name of Jesus, we take authority even over any demonic spirits that are behind an affliction. We bind you and rebuke you and command you to leave people now in Jesus' name. But Father, whatever it is, we thank you that your work is enough. Jesus, your finished work is enough. When you said it is finished, you meant it. Sickness and disease, dominion over us is finished. And we stand on that now in Jesus' name. And so we speak healing. We speak life. I speak healing right now into every body in Jesus' name. Come on, let's just lean in for a few words of knowledge. I believe and speak healing right now. Someone's got migraine headaches. And you've been having ongoing migraine headaches. In the name of Jesus, that is being healed right now. Somebody else has had real pain in your eyes. I feel like maybe it's one eye or it's two. But there's been some sharp pains. In the name of Jesus, we speak healing right now. Someone has had some issues with hearing. I think it's in your left ear. And, and, and it's there, and there's just like this ringing and kind of saying, we speak healing and restoration in the name of Jesus. Someone in your throat and just some different elements of what are going on. We speak healing and wholeness right now in the name of Jesus. We speak healing to backs right now in Jesus' name. Someone's got some issues with your elbow. We speak healing in Jesus' name. Carpal tunnel syndrome and just some things going on with your joints. We speak healing. Arthritis, we speak healing today in the name of Jesus. Someone's got some real pain in your knees. We speak, we speak healing in the name of Jesus. Someone's got a pain, even I, I laugh, it sounds like a pain in your butt, but it's like there's a pain that's happening for a lack of better way to say, in your butt. And we just speak healing right now in Jesus' name. Healing to ankles in the name of Jesus. Bone spurs. Someone's got bone spurs and some things that are going. Healing in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is, we speak healing. We speak healing from COVID-19 today in the name of Jesus. Even if you don't know you have it, we speak healing. We declare over your household, over everywhere you go. We declare over our church community, even as we gather together, we are walking in the healing power of God in Jesus' name. And so we speak this and we declare this in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Come on, let's just take a few more moments here before the Lord, before we close down. Someone's watching this, you've been having trouble sleeping at night, real difficulty sleeping. Well, I just speak and declare peace over you right now in Jesus' name. Someone's having a lot of nightmares in your dreams. I just take authority over that demonic torment that's becoming against your life in your dreams. We bind and rebuke it now, and we speak peaceful rest in Jesus' name. Even there's a parent watching, your child has been tormented in the night. In the name of Jesus, right now, we speak healing in Jesus' name. Healing and freedom and deliverance. You go into your child's room and you just take some anointing oil. Not that it's special in itself, but it's symbolic of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I want you just to anoint that room and I want you to declare uh, just freedom over them. And then the other thing I want you to do, because I actually had this happen with a pastor friend. I want you to go through that room and ask the Lord to show you if there's anything in that room that maybe is opening a door to the enemy. Uh, I just share this testimony. I had a pastor friend and his son was being tormented in the nights and he asked a few of us to pray with him and we prayed with him. And one of the things, I think it was myself, 
excuse me, <coughs> I don't remember for sure, but someone, I, I think it was me, I just want to take credit if it wasn't me, had, had got the sense in their spirit that they need to do a walk through the room and look for something. And so they did a walk through the room, and in the room they found a book, and they had no idea how it got there. And when they opened the book, it had these little goblin creatures in this book, and they were the same goblin creatures that were showing up in his dream. And so they prayed over him, they anointed the room, and they went and destroyed the book, and the night terror stopped. There was a shift for this young man. And so again, I'm not saying that's all the time. Sometimes, you know, you just need to stop watching scary movies, doing things like that. But sometimes there's something in there. And so do a walkthrough. I feel like I'm talking to somebody. Do a prayerful walkthrough. Get some other people to come in, social distancing and everything. They wear their masks as they want. But come in and pray through that space and ask the Lord to show you what needs to shift or change. Amen? All right, so I think we're there. God, anything else that needs healing? We just speak healing and wholeness in Jesus' name. Everyone agree with me said. Amen. All right, well, it's been an honor to be together today. Have a great long weekend. I trust it's been great so far. Have a great holiday Monday. Again, we're on this coming Friday for our prayer and worship gathering. Lots of other great things to continue here at Toronto State Church. We love you. God bless you. Have an amazing day and have an amazing week. Thank you so much for joining us for our online worship experience. Remember to click subscribe and the notification bell so you know when we upload new videos. Enjoy the rest of your day and see you next week.